you guys watching, I'm here with Chad Amesworth. Did I say that right? That's right. Okay, Chad Amesworth, also known as Beach Biker on Instagram and on YouTube. Really good YouTuber. And I want to take the time. Ryan, thanks for or, uh, Chad, thanks for taking the time to yeah, for sure. do this tonight. I know it's a Saturday night and we got families and other stuff going on, but uh, I appreciate you taking the time. No problem. All right, so what we're going to do first is, uh, if you can, for the people watching that may not know anything about you, a lot of them probably do because a lot of my subscribers are probably your subscribers, but if probably you can, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you ride, and how long have you been motovlogging? Okay, well, I the how long I've been motovlogging part is kind of skewed because I had the idea of starting it um, last July. Uh, I was experimenting with just vlogging in general prior to that. Um, uh, after being influenced by people like Casey Neistat and stuff, and I've always been a camera guy, and I always rode motorcycles, and I never thought to really put the two together. But I decided to try to give it a good shot last summer, and I did three videos that I put a lot of effort into. And then um, right after that, my wife was given an opportunity for her career to relocate us back to Florida, and our whole lives turned upside down, and I didn't post anything for five months. Um, so, but my channel steadily grow, grew through that time frame, even though I wasn't posting, and it gave me encouragement to know that once January come around, came around, and that's when my daughter was going to be starting a three-day-a-week preschool type thing that was going to give me the opportunity to finally have time during the week, because I was a stay-at-home dad during the weekdays and a wedding photographer on weekends, so I was finally going to have that time to ride for one, but also make videos, so... Um, really, I guess you can call it starting new for now. I've only done two videos this year, but you know, I've got plans to do two to three a week for six months and see how it goes. And I, as far as what I ride, if anybody doesn't know, it's a 2016 Harley Davidson Iron A3 that I have plans to eventually build out to a 1200. I did all of the like cosmetic changes to it first. Um, I wanted to break the bike in a little bit. I've still only got, I haven't even crossed 2,000 miles on it yet. So I wanted to break it in a little bit before starting to mess with the in, the internals, you know. Um, and I wanted to make it more comfortable because I'm a six foot three guy, and Iron Eight Eight Three stock is like super uncomfortable if you don't change a few things. Um, so I had to switch like forward controls and do some mini aids and stuff like that to make it actually ergonomically work for me. Um, and once I had that, I just sort of been keeping it that way for a while. I was busy dealing with life, and now going to be working on some new things coming forward. Yeah, I mean, I had a Sportster too. That was that was my first bike. I had a 2014 883 Iron, and I loved it. Cool. It, um, I got lucky. I got a great deal on the one I had, and it had a ton of extras on it already. I mean, it had um, really it had Vincent Hines pipes on it. It had oh um, man. Yeah, it had a, a S and S air cleaner on it. High air cleaner. Uh, awesome. Yeah, a, bu a bunch of stuff, and I, you know, I got it almost dirt cheap. I couldn't be, I couldn't pass up the offer. And I mean, I'm not a brand snob. I don't like one really one brand over the other. Right. I almost bought a Kawasaki Vulcan. That was almost my first. My first bike was. I was dead set on getting a Vulcan, but this one popped okay. up on Craigslist, and it ended up being such a good deal at such the right time that right. I went with. I went with the Harley, and I just fell in love with it. And I did the whole yeah, thing sure. myself. I did a lot of work on it myself. I put drag bars on it, new grips, passenger seat, sissy bar. Uh, yeah, I had a William Max bag on it for a little bit of storage. I had a fork bag on it. But, yeah, I mean, the sports is a great platform. I really wish I could have kept both. But um, right. I did trade yeah. in this past August for a sport glide. And I'm yeah. going to say I, I'm happier with my choice. But I wish I could have kept both bikes. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, I mean, life, you know, can't keep. I used to have a 71 Camaro that I wish I still had. But, you know, life happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, for sure. Right. So, uh we talked a little bit about kind of who your influences were, but um, you said what made you start motovlogging was the fact that you're a camera guy. And if you guys, if you haven't watched Chad's videos, they are beautiful looking. I mean, they're cinematic quality. I think you've used drone footage. You've used um, uh, really, uh, really nice camera equipment and everything. You can yeah, yeah. a lot of work into your videos. I'll show you. You know, the most, usually what most people are using with motovlog is, you know, GoPros and whatnot. And then when you put into perspective the size difference for, for, you know, using other cameras, it makes it difficult because you're carrying all this huge amount of equipment um, while riding, you have to like break it down into a bag and then break it back out every time you stop. 
So it's a ton mm -hmm. of setup time for each time I change locations. But, you know, I'm just going to hopefully admit it'll be worth it, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I do a little bit of photography work at work, or at work, and I know I know what that's like, man. It's it's you spend more time setting up than you do shooting, <laughs> right. and then you spend even more thing. time editing. Oh, yeah. Each of those videos I just did, first two videos this year, took six hours each to edit. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm kind of that way where I'm not. I don't believe in perfect, but I believe in putting a lot of work into videos post. Right. So that they can turn out the best they can with the equipment you have, because yeah, you got True. equipment. I mean, I usually just I usually just do mine with a GoPro Hero Five session, and uh, I record my audio separate with a, a oh, okay. Zoom, Zoom H One handy audio recorder, and I splice them in yeah. the Premiere together. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've been thinking about doing that. I have tons of audio issues with the GoPro going directly into it. Half with like seventy percent of the time. The audio won't even go into the GoPro, and I'll have a whole clip of it's silent. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I experimented with the the little brick uh, audio adapter yeah. that they made, but there's so yeah. many workarounds for it; it wasn't worth keeping. So I just decided to do separate audio and video. Right. That that's, way I can. That's smart. That way you can, yeah, that way you can. Um, if you if your audio is clipping or something, you can at least try to fix it. Right. Yeah. Totally. Do you use the Adobe Creative Suite when you do your editing? Uh, for everything except for video. Um, I For video, I, back in the day, when I was in college in 2008 through 2011, uh, I was using, because back then, it was more Final Cut and, and all. So uh, with Apple, because I'm a Mac guy. And, uh, so I just got used to Final Cut, and I'm so ingrained in how it works that it's just one of those things where I'm 30 years old now and I don't want to learn something new and I just keep using the same old thing because it works. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, your your videos look awesome. I wish I could. I wish mine could look that good someday. But I, I always uh -huh. like to try improving. I know I don't have the equipment like you do, but you know, I I, I got the tools with Adobe and everything, and I, I just that's something I wanted to improve this year was my video quality. Cool. Yeah. I mean, there's stuff out there as long as you know what you're going trying to get. I mean. There's stuff out there that's, you know, in the same price range as GoPros that can produce pretty similar results, you know. Um, yeah. But like I said, it's you really knowing the software on how to make it all work for you is is really the harder side. Of it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Now um, you talked about you talked about you, you you're going to be doing some more mods on your bike. Did you have anything in mind that you got planned that you want to do to it maybe in the uh, future? First off, uh, changing it, you know, the displacement to 1200. That's, you know, right. and I'm still debating whether or not to do the Harley kit versus the other thing, other brands I've seen that are look like, I think like 1275 and stuff, but, yeah. Yeah, uh, and whether or not you have it. Yeah. Right. Um, so, I mean, camera performance, I think, yeah. So, um, yeah, I've heard different things about which way to go. And uh, I definitely don't have the skill mechanically to work inside of the motor. I'm, I'm not going to do it, try that. So, no, or, or the tools, really. Um, all of my money goes into camera equipment. Um, so, you know, I probably would pay. That would be, like, the one thing that I would have someone else do. You know, I like doing everything else on the bike. But when it comes to inside the motor or, like, changing the frame, I'd probably pay a professional to do that. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, that's I mean, the main only real other thing I want to do, for, at least for the short term. Yeah. Yeah. Uh I actually looked into that for for the iron, but um, I just figured um, I, I knew one day I wanted to go bigger. But right. I kept going back and forth with that. But, um, I mean, it's a good chunk of change, but from what I hear, it makes a big difference in the performance of that bike. Especially for the 883, like, going, coming from – because I, I still have my 2006 1200 Custom, um, and it needs an air clicker uh, carb rebuild, so it doesn't run and won't stay idle right now. But – uh, but that thing on a top end speed would kill my 83 any day. But from a standstill, the 83 has way more torque and it's geared better to just have more power at the low end of the gear. So, and I've heard that when you take an 83 and upgrade it to a 1200, it retains that low end is torque and power and gearing, mm -hmm. but with the top end power of the 1200, it's like best of both worlds. So that was partially why I chose to get an 83 to start even though I had a 1200 before, if that makes any sense. Because most people would, wouldn't downgrade motor sizes when they buy a new bike, but I just knew, like, down the road I would do that build-out and that I would 
benefit more so down the road from that and it'd make a cool project video to eventually you know do, to, to explain i do plan on doing that probably in the summer or fall is when i'll have money saved up for it maybe to be able to do that change out and i'm going to do a whole video on that process and i'm going to try to get some weight pulled with a local harley dealer in the meantime to see if they would let me showcase what they do um, but we'll see about that you know that still remains to be seen but we'll see yeah, if you find a good dealer out there, like the one I go to, the one the one I frequent, Ted's down in Alton, they're great. I mean, they've, they've yeah. let me go back into the back room when my bike cool. was on the lift, when I traded it in. They let me come cool. and take a look at all the bikes they had in the back. They had police bikes back awesome. there and stuff. But you find a good dealer, man, uh, they'll help you out a lot. Yeah, for sure. Actually, the, my 06 1200 Custom, I bought that at Orlando Harley, the same one that um, Blockhead is always at. The, and, yeah. So I just, it's kind of funny that like, that ended up being that way, but I was, yeah, I mean, that dealer's great. I might just go back to that one because I already know they're down with YouTubers because they, you know, do all that stuff with other YouTubers, so we'll see. Yeah, speaking of Orlando. <laughs> there you I go. Had a, I had a moto vlogger, uh, Blue Bike and Doyle, he sent me like 15 poker chips. Really? It was quite a haul, yeah. They're from all over. They're from like, Georgia, Florida, and everywhere in between. Really cool guy. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Let's, let's take a second to acknowledge who's in here. Let's see. We got Kid Moto Twenty Two. Ryan, thanks for joining the feed again, man. He says, "Agreed, the hammer is excellent product with good customer service." Hellstoke Garage, how you doing, buddy? Nice to see you in here. Great Egret, I've seen a couple messages from you, buddy. What's going on? Moto Carries in here. Nice to nice to see you chiming in. Good Moto vlogger from California. There, my wife is in here. <laughs> She's in the house. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, hope, uh, yeah, burn up wood burning joined. He's in here. Hopefully, everybody's still in here, but this is awesome. Yeah, we've got a yeah. good amount of people. Um, happy with the way it's going so far. So, favorite moto vloggers? Favorite moto vloggers? Well, I would say uh, I'll rank them on the list of like who when I wasn't thinking about moto vlogging, who was more interesting at that point versus now that I'm thinking about it and trying to like emulate and get tips from and stuff. So back before I started having interest in doing it, I would say Blockhead was a big one because uh, he just seemed like a down earth guy. He only had like 25,000 subscribers when I first saw his stuff. And then I didn't watch any of his stuff for like six months and then check back and he had like 100,000. I was like, geez. He's doing something like right. Five, five different bikes. <laughs> He's been right. Five yeah, different right. Bikes. <laughs> yeah. Seriously. Um, and uh, John Maxwell, I like I like what he does. He seems like a pretty authentic guy. The Harley Tech. Um, yeah. He uh, he's got a lot of genuine information that I really like, like actual useful information. He's so, yeah. It's interesting how some people focus more on being more informative, and then others focus more on being more of an entertainment source. Um, so it's it's interesting how people do that. Funny thing about John Maxwell, he I got a notification yesterday while I was getting ready to go to an engagement party, um, notification from YouTube saying that he subscribed <laughs> to my channel. I was like, what? That's pretty crazy. So yeah, I guess you start putting stuff out there, you never know where it shows up, you know. So yeah, it's for sure, pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say those are some of my favorites. Uh, yeah, the thing with Maxwell is it's good to have somebody on the inside, like him and uh, exactly. Matt Laidlaw. Matt Laidlaw is yeah. a good one because he's so informative. I mean, yeah, his family owns the Harley-Davidson, Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson, but right. it's not like he praises every bike he gets on. You know, he, he points out right. what, what, what Harley could have done better. But, sure. Yeah, yeah he, you like John Maxwell did with the live one. On decision-making for a lot of people. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So um, recently you just got back into moto vlogging. Did you take a break from YouTube altogether, or did you just take a break from moto vlogging? Yeah, it was it was all together. I I uh, I I sort of have. <laughs> if you want to go way back, I started my channel in two thousand seven. I want to say, uh, like before there was even the subscriber system. <laughs> And uh, I did, in college, I did a bunch of videos to try to, like, detect, you know, experiment with it. They had nothing to do with motorcycles. And one of them went, went a little bit viral, and it got up to about 140,000 views in a matter of, like, a month. And it was seen in, like, 80 countries and stuff. It was a parody video my friend and I did for this college thing. 
it's still on my channel if you go way back you can see it and i look completely different but um uh but then after that i didn't do it for a long time you know and then you, you do it again and, you know so i experimented with you know you when you're testing things out you sort of emulate things you like and you try to mimic you know because nobody can be really original anymore um so you know what, what i did for a while is i didn't ever really have the time to start doing it seriously because being a stand-up dad and i knew i had to wait until that day came when i finally had a few days a week to actually do it right because i didn't want to try to do it in sort of a you know short-changed way and mm -hmm. i just spent a lot of time studying and maybe posting a you know, video here or there to experiment to see what sort of feedback i got um i knew that i i feel like the vlogger market and like camera review market was way too saturated with like thousands of people doing the exact same thing and then i always enjoyed watching moto vloggers so i always thought you know this is an interesting thing i was like why am i so interested in this even though i'm into this whole like world of camera equipment and cinematic videos and you know all these moto vloggers just running around like crazy people with gopros on their helmet and having fun and and i always enjoyed riding my bikes and i thought you know, I'm going to put these two together and see if I can try to mesh both worlds a little bit. You know, it feels like it's a market or, or an untapped market, I guess you could say, where those usually don't overlap, like the, the high quality production with motor vlogging and trying to ride a thin line without seeming like you're too on the cinematic side. You're not an authentic person with riding, but then not going too far the other way, just be just like a bunch, you know, be like everybody else and everything. So... You know, we'll see where it goes. Um, but uh, for for now, the next six months, I have a schedule somewhere written out that I've got titles and video ideas for two, three a week for six months straight that I'm going to be trying my best to stick to. So we'll we'll see. It was pretty tough in week one to get two out. And so I'm going to try to rearrange next week how I shoot things to make sure that my efficiency stays good and that I don't um, end up having to stay up until 5 o'clock in the morning every night editing. But... Um, we'll see where it goes. So yeah, I'm excited for it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, and that's one of the things because I did a live feed like this with Great Egret last Sunday. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we talked about because um, I watched your I watched this week's video you put up about uh, your your upload schedule and everything. And before before that video, we were talking on this live stream about you know. Yeah, I know the guy's got family. I know he, he's probably got a full-time job. I didn't know how you were going to fit in all this great-looking video and editing. And, you know, you're saying six hours of editing when yeah. you got all of that going on. Because now, yeah, I know I know it's tough, too. I'm just – it's tr it's, a, it's it's hard for me to just push out one video a week because, hey, the weather <laughs> sucks right now out here. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so I'm trying to do what I can in the garage. But I mean, the the weather's just put the damper on everything, and you know you got to keep putting yeah. content out there. People are going to lose interest in you. Right, no, it's, it's true. Really, especially if you're really small, if you're a really small channel. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I mean, it, although I will say though, um, the the whole bits about YouTube algorithm stuff. Uh, you know, I did three videos in succession, and I just tried to make them as best as I could make them in July. Didn't touch my channel for five months, and the rate at which it was growing was slow and steady, but it was smooth and it never really changed. And it, the, the rate started to slowly increase more towards December. And then I uploaded that one video in December and it went, I jumped 200 subscribers in like two weeks. It just went up. Nice. And, nice. and that video wasn't even like targeted towards you know, like keywords or anything like that in the title or nothing. It was just an update video. So it's, I don't know that the, myth of like you gotta upload three times a week and be consistent or else you people like kill your channel right i don't think that's true but it's interesting i just want to try seeing what happened you know, if i thought three videos that were high quality for that lasted for five months over doubled my channel what would three videos of that quality every week do piling up you know and see where it goes yeah and that's one of the things i kind of keep in the back of my mind too is quality over quantity Sure. You spend more time on videos making really good content that looks really nice. You know, your audio's on point, your video's on point. I'll watch that over somebody who puts out 12 videos a week and it's just, uh, right. you know, sure. random yeah. stuff. You but, gotta find that fine line. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we've had a couple questions come up here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll back through the feed. Cool. 
Adam Richards asks, so if money was no object, what bike would you both like? Any brand? I'll let you go first. Oh. Um, no objects. Um, it's always a tough one because it's such a part of the reality. <laughs> I would say I, would, I don't really have a desire. To, I would definitely still go with Harley just because I, as I explained in one of my old videos, I liked how Harley, the history and culture behind Harley and how they sort of make classic versions of something, you know, new bikes that are still classic type of stuff. So I, I would still go with that. And and because of that, I'd always gravitate towards the Sportster because it literally is a model that's been around for 60 whatever years uh, versus like, you know, a road glide or something that is relatively newer. So, uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I'd say less less so one particular bike, more so a variety of bikes. I'd like to, if money wasn't a question, I'd like to have – the best iron 83 that I could build out and then the, and build it out to a 1200 and then maybe have, I, I've ridden a Triumph Bonneville. That was a super fun bike. It was like really jumpy with the throttle. It had a lot of depth to it. That would be fun to have one of those and tinker with it. Um, those aren't too cheap either. I mean, those are fairly expensive. Um, and believe it or not, and this really goes against the grain with finances, but way back when, before I got into motorcycles, I love scooters because being in Florida, Scooters are like huge here, especially in South Florida. They're actual yeah, genuine sure. form of transportation, and you can like get around on a week for like a dollar in gas. Um, yeah, so sure. I, I wouldn't mind having a Vespa, like one of the top end, like high end Vespas would be super fun to have. Yeah, I noticed. I went to Florida two years ago. A buddy of mine got married down in Pensacola, and we were down oh, yeah. in Pensacola Beach, and you could rent scooters. And I was yeah. like, you know, if we ever come down here again, that would be cool to do. Ride a scooter and just drive it up and down the beach. It'd be fun. Right? You just twist the throttle, no gears. And just, and they're yeah. super no shipping off of the I mean, they're fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a long time since I've been on a scooter. And, you know, a little background about me. I never rode growing up. I didn't ride dirt bikes. I didn't ride at all. Until, right. You know, I'm, I was in my mid-30s. I'm 36 now. I just started riding right after I turned 35. Hey, you know, everyone starts somewhere. Yeah, it's just me and my buddy, who I've been friends with since like sixth grade. We just, like four or four, five years ago, we were like, we should get motorcycles. Yeah. Looks <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's yeah, funny you see that. that. One of my friends yeah, just joined, yeah. right? One of my friends just joined, his name's David Lapham. He just joined. Uh, we had a similar thing with that back in the day with scooters. I He got a scooter. And that was like what sparked my interest in wanting a scooter. And we both had scooters for a little while, and we were the only people that e either of us really knew that had two wheeled vehicles. Um, and it sort of started the interest in motorcycling. And then he started getting interested in motorcycles and all of that. And you know, so, who knows? Maybe one day, I think he sold his scooter, and he has he never got a bike. But um, uh, yeah, I've got. If he ever wants to come ride, maybe I'll do a video one time where he'll um, come ride with me whenever I get that 1200 custom fixed up. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Great Egret Moto says the live wire is a super fast scooter. <laughs> yeah, right. Basically, right? It's just twist and go. Yeah. Uh, I would I be know, interested in I test riding one of those. To... Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I would be interested in test riding one of those. I think that would be a lot of fun to compare how it feels, even though I've never even entertained the idea of buying one because of the price. But, you know, it's an interesting concept for sure. Yeah. Uh, to answer to answer his question about the bike, um, you know, the Sport Glide, really, if I had this bike tricked out, I don't think I'd want any other bike. But yeah. if, I were, if I were to look at another bike, which I haven't test ridden, but I really like the look of it, is the Chieftain from Indian. Oh, yeah. Okay. If I had a top-of-the-line one, like in red or in black, and it's just tricked out, exhaust, you know, everything – yeah. That. Yeah, for sure. I've always liked the style of Indian motorcycles. I've always liked the style that they go with. It's a little, a little more rugged. I want to say, like, like country rugged a little bit sometimes. And I think that's kind of cool. You know, I mean, it has a unique appeal to it that I think would be neat to have. Maybe like an Indian and a Harley would be interesting to have. Yeah. Um, I, I was also when I was looking at bikes, I was looking at the scout. Yeah. Yeah. Because I think it's over sure. the PCs itself, and I, I yeah, think it's like a lot of scoops. 
All right. So when did you first start writing? Oh, well, to count scooters, I took my uh, Motor Florida motorcycle course to get the endorsement on my license in 2013, September of 2013. And I took the course because I knew I was going to ride a scooter. They actually allow you to take the course on a scooter instead of a motorcycle, which made the course super easy. Like all of the exercises you have to do, like everybody else is struggling, trying to shift and like learn how to stop and start and stuff. And, and I'm just like, just going to throttle and go on and like cruise through the whole course with no problem. So, I mean, if anybody has, tries to go get their endorsement done, ask if they can provide a scooter to do it on that because you can just breeze through the whole course and then practice on your own after that. And, you know, with a motorcycle and, and learn without the pressure of, you know, everybody around you and worry about messing up in front of people. So, you know, but I guess we're counting as 2013 and on. Uh, I had scooters until March or no, April of 2015 is when I bought the 1200 Custom at the Orlando Harley dealer as my first motorcycle. And I had never ridden a gear shift bike before. And so I, I went to the dealer and bought it. And they they were running a promotion where you could buy like accessories and stuff and they would throw it into your loan. So I got a helmet, but they didn't have the helmet at the location I was at. They had it at a location across Orlando. So I had to ride the bike across Orlando through traffic on like highways and stuff. And I had never gone more than like 40 miles an hour on a scooter with gears. Yeah. So I did that without a helmet. It was extremely nerve wracking, but you know, you got, got the hang of it pretty quick. Yeah, I, I took baby steps, man. I, I took I took the rider course like you. I actually bought my iron before I even took my course. Oh, you did? Okay. I had to because the bike wasn't going to stay on Craigslist very well. And sure. I got yeah. real, like I said, I got real lucky with that deal. I think uh, it had 1,800 miles on it, all these extras. And I think I paid 5700 for it. Wow, that's not bad. Which at all. I couldn't pass it up. Like the next day, I was down there with the trailer, cash in hand, ready to pay for it. I, I was like, wow. I, I can't pass this up. But then yeah. uh, the following, let's see, I got it in February. And then the following March, I took the MSF course. And yeah, yeah like you said, I, I did a video on this too, on my MSF course experience. But, you know, everybody there was so eager to ride. And I had one guy that was sitting next to me. He was an older fellow. He was probably in his late 40s, early 50s. And okay. all of his buddies rode. And he's like, I can't wait to get Harley, man. I said, I, I want to ride with all my buddies. I can't wait. I'm so excited to do this. I get my license and this poor guy we got out on the on the course and as soon as he you know the first thing you do you, you mount your bike you get on the bike you sit on it that's the first thing you do they tell you to swing the leg over from the left side to the right side the guy fell over to the right side hit his head like you know we all alone, we're all wearing helmets he hit his head not once but twice this happened and he fell a third time and they had to send the poor guy home i felt so bad for him Wow. Well, I guess that's why you have that course. <laughs> you rather have yeah. it there than he get a bike and go out on the road. You know, yeah, so it's I that's smart. That he tried, I hope that he tried again because he was more eager than me to ride. I mean, Man. this guy, had, he had that twinkle in his eye like I can't ride a bike. Yeah. But he's... Yeah. Man. But I think we had like, like know what happened to that had to leave because uh, one girl was kind of holding up the class. She wouldn't shift out of first year. And, they, you know, they pulled her aside. They said, are, are you doing okay? I mean, it was a private conversation, so I don't know what went on. But she ended up right. leaving. And I'm just like, I felt bad for these people because, you know, they spent the time with the classroom. Yeah. And, you know, everybody the money on the class. To do this. Yeah. 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 I, one of the guys in the class I was at, he – and those are those test bikes that have you right, take a course on are like, 250 cc's and under, but uh, I forget what brand it was, but he had, we were doing an exercise where you have to like go five feet and stop, go five feet and stop, like to work on just initial like take off of the clutch lever. And he was probably, I want to say he was in the 60s, and, but he was a real skinny guy. And on the second, like he did it successfully once, and on the second try, he must have just cranked the throttle way too much and let go of the lever too fast because the bike shot out from under him like a rocket. Oh, like it, it literally went up in the air, did a wheelie on its own, and hit the fencing on the side of the like parking lot. Luckily, no one was in front of him. 
But it hit the fencing and collapsed down on the side. He was still standing. Like he didn't fall. <laughs> it just left from underneath the boat. So, oh, I mean, man. even a 250cc can still fly. If you twist it hard enough, but don't let out the clutch properly, you know? So it was yeah. interesting how that happened. He was okay, thankfully. Well, yeah, that's good. It's terrible to see that stuff because, you know, all these people are here because they want to do the same thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's just, it sucks. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't even, I didn't really have any problems. I think my biggest problem was the box where you had to yeah. pick your eight. Yeah. I was having tons of problems with that during the MSF, but when it came time for testing, I did it perfect. Huh. I couldn't believe, I couldn't cool. believe it. Wow. Hey, I guess you just got, got it right when it mattered, you know? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Um, I... I, I did this last week. Do you do you have a clock nearby? Because we've got one hour to stream this, and I want to make sure we don't go over and we cover everything. Uh, it's it's seven thirty right now. Oh, okay. So we're good. My time. Uh, guys, Sorry, six thirty your time. Okay, yeah, you guys. If you're watching and you came into the feed late, I'm gonna save this video after we're done with the feed, and I'm gonna upload it to YouTube probably tomorrow or so. That way you guys can rewatch it. Um, I saw some people were having some problems. Your buddy said something about sound, but his, his phone sound wasn't turned on, so we debunked that. <laughs> and then, uh, Geared Raven. Oh, how's it going? My screen keeps freezing. I hope the feed's coming. If the guys, if the, clear to me. In, if the feed's coming in bad at all, let me know. It should be okay. I'm on Wi-Fi. I think you're on strong Wi-Fi. I haven't seen many much glitching or anything. Mr. Big YouTube, how's it going, man? Okay, she's having technical problems. All right, so do you have any big rides planned for this year? Yeah, I've got plans through the six-month schedule. Part of, um, I like to try, I'm thinking I'm going to create like mini series within, and I'm, I'm going to try to stretch my channel to where it's, Six month long season, so it's like season this season two because season one was technically what I did in last year, um, even though it was only like four episodes. But um, so this season till June, I've got I'd have to look at my schedule, but I know I want to do a I'm doing a series called Ride Through where I ride through and then whatever city it is or beach it is, and um, I've got plans to go to. Orlando, which I'll be going to on Monday this week. I'll be riding to Orlando, and I'll do a video on that. Uh, I want to go to Daytona Bike Week in March when that happens, because that's humongous. Um, and then also Key West, Florida, which is about five hours south of me. And the ride to get there is ridiculous, because um, uh, there's that seven-mile bridge where there's no land around you. You're just surrounded by the water, um, which should be pretty cool visuals. Trying to get a drone shot there will be interesting. I don't know if it's possible allow that but we'll see um and then i know i'm going to go out to clearwater beach on the west coast of florida um just west of tampa um because that's a really cool spring breaking type of area that's really beautiful i'm going to do a ride through video there um so those are all you know going east you know east on another trip i'm going to do i'm going to do from state road 60 is a uh, road that goes from vero beach on the east coast of florida all the way across to clearwater beach and it starts at like one pier and ends at another pier. Um, and it's basically like a miniature version of Route 66. Like it's, it's similar how it ends at a pier in Clearwater, just like Route 66 ends at Santa Monica Pier in uh, California. And it's it's something I'm gonna try to do a video about the whole thing and start off the day uh, with the sun rising over the ocean, follow the sun and the sea sunset over the Gulf. And so that's, that's something that people do in Florida. It's like you follow, it's a follow the sun kind of type of thing where you see the sun rise and set the same day. I'm going to try to do that with riding. And you pass through central Florida. Uh, there's a lot of orange groves and citrus growing everywhere and stuff. So it should make for a really cool video. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to do that one, but that one's going to probably be like a weekend long thing. But, you know, most of the other videos are things where I can do trips there and back in the same day for the most part. The Key West one will have to be a weekend thing too. Uh, compared to where I was last year in Texas, Texas, I was in West Texas. I was five hours from the nearest town, anywhere outside of Midland where I was, out like oil country out there. So travel videos there. I did one video two year, or a year and a half ago, July of 2017, where I rode my Harley um, uh, 650 miles round trip 
from Midland to Dallas and back through like the middle of the other. And so that was pretty taxing. But um, so yeah, it's exciting to be in Florida now where things are closer because I can go to places you know, more easily and be able to make videos about it without having to dedicate a whole weekend to it. Nice. Yeah, as far as me, as far as me, um, one thing. Can you guys hear me? Okay, are you still getting feedback? Can you guys let me know in the in the, in the feed below? Anyway, hopefully you can hear me. Chad. Um, one thing that we were thinking about doing, me and Joe Great Eager talked about this last week, was doing a Midwest Moto Vlogger meetup. Because there are guys that do vlog in the Midwest. I mean, there's none in my area that I know of because like, I haven't really seen any. There was a guy in the east side of Illinois, but he kind of stopped about five, six months ago. Hmm. But I know there's guys in Indiana. There's guys up north in Chicago. There's great eagles right. up in Wisconsin. And there's a couple guys up there that he knows that would probably come along. Also, um, a couple subscribers probably from the Dakotas maybe. Okay. And a couple others I follow on uh, this hashtag support thing that I know are from the Midwest, like Iowa and maybe Idaho, or maybe Missouri. I don't know. But, you know, one of the reasons I started motovlogging – was because there's there's not a whole lot of that going on here. Right. I don't really see any moto vloggers, especially from the rural rural part of the Midwest. Yeah. And I just thought maybe if, if I could get something going, maybe you'd make it I don't know if it's gonna start anything or whatever, but I just figured since that's not going on around here, you know, maybe I could make a few videos and maybe spark some interest for people to come ride this way because we have excellent riding down by the Mississippi in you know, the river road that goes through Grafton and goes throughout the Campsville. That's beautiful riding, especially in the fall when the leaves turn oh, out. You got, you got bluffs on, on one side and you got the river right there on your other side. It's just beautiful riding. Yeah. But as far as other rides, um, I, I want to do more charity rides this year than I did last year. I did one okay. that turned out really well that a local NC put on. And I know, uh, they hold a lot of them that start at my dealership that I hang out at all the time. And me and my buddy even talked about doing a camping trip, maybe like to the Ozarks or, or Southern Illinois, because that's really good writing too. I bet. But, I mean, one day I, I, I would really hope to do a cross-country type of thing, like maybe go all the way out to California. Yeah. That would be nice. Um, I would recommend I that. I didn't do it on a bike. I did it in a car, and it was beautiful. I mean, going from – West Texas all the way to California, and I passed through Vegas. That was ridiculous. Like the whole time, I was wishing I was on my motorcycle because it, it's just a, yeah. it's the scenery out there is insane. I totally recommend yeah, I it. Yeah, went, I went to school out in Tempe. I went to a graphic design school out there not far from ASU. And, you know, uh, I, I told Joe this last week. I said, you got a small town guy, 3,000 people live in this town, 4,000 maybe at best, and you move out to this big city in Phoenix. And it's, it's, it's mind blowing because it's a totally different yeah. lifestyle, totally different part of the country. It looks totally different, and I just, you know, I regret not doing a few more things. But I think it was just the fact that going into a big city was enough. But I was four hour drive from San Diego. I was a three hour drive from Mexico. I never did those things, and that's one of the things yeah. I regret. So maybe, maybe getting this bike, having this bike. And doing this might be another means to get down there and and explore because seeing the desert at sunset, beautiful. Oh, yeah. That's one, For sure. that's one thing I want to see again. Definitely, man. All right. I only got one more question on the list, and then if people want to ask any questions down in the comments, we can do that. But last question I have is, where would your dream ride be? Dream ride. Oh, I, I mean, I would love to do Route 66, to be honest. Like, actually start in Chicago and go all the way through. I mean, anybody who's done that, I can only imagine how difficult it is. But just from doing, like, a five-hour trip in Texas was tough. So I commend anybody who does that, um, especially I'm a sportster. But, um, yeah, that would be my – because it's, kind of, it's iconic, you know. Like, it's an iconic road and – and I would try to do the thing where you try to follow as much of the original path, original road as possible, even the parts that aren't even technically on the map, like as a road officially anymore. That'd be super fun to try to find that and do that. But, you know, with kids and, you know, life and stuff, that's probably a trip that'll wait until 
retirement days because that, that would take a long time to do a trip like that properly. Yeah, and I'm only like 10 minutes from Route 66. It runs right through the town I work in. And really? He, he did that Route 66 trip. Which yeah. I've got a few videos until he's done with that series. But yeah, we, I'm watching we, the we actually hung out. Like, he came through here, and he put out three videos from one riding day that we did together, and it was, it was a fun time. I took him yeah. down the river road, and you know we we went to a really good place to eat, and just had a good time. It, he's a really down to earth guy, cool, uh, genuinely nice, and yeah, I love his content too. Joe's Joe's a really good guy. Yeah, that's something I would say is both of you guys. It, you can tell watching both of you the genuine love for doing it, like writing and making videos, is there. You know, and I think people identify with that first before anything having to do with production value. Like if you don't have that genuine care for wanting to make sure that you're connecting with viewers via the love of motorcycles and making content, then it doesn't matter how good the content is or not. Like you know, that's the most important thing and both of you guys it's clear that you guys are uh, definitely engaged and want want to do a lot of fun stuff. Yeah, for sure. Well, if anybody's got any questions, I mean, I might some might pop in my head along the way. Chad, if you have any, man, fire away. Sure. Uh, um, I guess I would say, do you have any uh, any other influences that you've sort of tried to emulate or been inspired by on YouTube outside of motor vlogging? Outside of moto vlogging, I can't. I can't say. I can't really say. I mean, there's there's other channels I watch that is no, in no way motorcycle related. Right. But, uh, right. I, I can't really say that. You know. You know. When I'm when I'm on YouTube, when I'm not watching moto vloggers, which is what I spend ninety percent of my time doing, is watching watching all these other moto vloggers. I just recently started following. Okay because of the hashtag support thing that's going on that uh, these guys down in Texas started, or this guy down in Texas started. But, um, yeah, it's just when, I, when I'm not doing mobile vlog stuff, when I'm, not, when I'm not watching it, it's just, you know, random videos. Like, I watch videos on a yeah. new video game that's coming out. You know, I watch yeah. Stuff, yeah. stuff that just pops up, you know. Sure. So I, can't, yeah. I can't really say that I have another influence outside of, of any mobile vloggers. I just... I, okay. I yeah, well, I would, I would, to that point about like your time being divided between watching or creating, and I've had like five months of just watching because I was too busy to create. So I branched out and was watching all kinds of stuff, trying to find inspiration for what I do. I wanted to do in January, and um, but now that I've started it, and how much time it takes to actually create, I can tell that the amount of time I'm going to spend watching stuff is going to go down drastically in order to create. So I would imagine that most creators that do it regularly and really stick to it, you know, if they choose to watch your content, that's a big deal because, you know, it's you, your time is super valuable to be, to be able to stick to your YouTube schedule of creating stuff. So, you know, but I, I, outside of motor vlogging, Peter McKinnon, Casey Neistat, you know, Casey Neistat's a vlog, regular vlogger, Peter McKinnon's a sort of a camera review, you know, tutorial guy that shows you how to do cinematic video and stuff. You know, he was a big influence for me, inspiring me on what sort of style I wanted to go for. Um, uh, Matty Hapoya, he's another one. Um, but, you know, it, it's interesting when you look at my homepage on YouTube, because it's like one video is like shade tree surgeon doing something stupid on his motorcycle that's extremely funny. And the next one's... Peter McKinnon doing a tutorial on, you know, it's like, to like totally unrelated content back and forth. It's interesting how the YouTube algorithm, you know, is able to handle all that stuff. And I always like to ask other people what they watch and how, how they see stuff. So it's interesting that you say that you pretty much stick to just moto vloggers. And I bet a lot of people in the moto vlog world are like that. They just, you know, they watch, they just eat it up. Yeah, and I don't know if you're too familiar with the hashtag support thing that's going on. I'm not yet. But if if you got time, check it out. Uh, this this guy down in Texas, Dirty D's. He started. He started I recommend that. I don't want to call it a movement, but it's just like a. Uh, it's a. It's like what it sounds like. Hashtag support. It's support. It's getting all right. the small photo vlogger channels. Follow each other, help each other out, subscribe oh, cool. to their pages, 
uh, you know, follow them on Instagram. And it does, it really does help. It, it does really help all these small channels out because, you know, the more subs sure. you get, the more exposure you get, you know, somebody else is going to see your video that, you know, might not otherwise. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, there's, there's, I've met a lot of guys that are, that are generally awesome and have a good time motovlogging, you know, and they're, they're regular guys like us that, you know, have, have jobs. And right. they just they just they do it for the love of it. They don't you know they don't do it for any other reason than the love of, of motorbike right. and riding motorcycles. Right. Now that brings me to something I would like to mention. Uh, the the thing of doing it for the love of it and because I know that some people can be turned off of the idea of making money through it. Like they won't watch your channel if you make any money with it at all. And I find that interesting because in order to do it, like in order to create stuff that really is good and interesting and awesome and do it on like a really regular level, it takes money to do it. So mm -hmm. it's an interesting concept to it. And I think it really is polarizing to the motorcycle community that that whole like, you know, real biker or, you know, uh, true biker mentality of like, I was born a rider and I never thought of anything you know, frivolous with motorcycling. I, you know, I, I ride a Harley because I ride a Harley, not because it sounds cool. Like that sort of, you know, mentality that's out there. Um, and I always appreciate when people comment and talk about just loving motorcycling for what it is instead of being in that sort of, uh, say, 30 years ago mentality of like, you know, only real bikes are Harleys, that type of mentality. Um, and uh, I think that there's a big community that is untapped on YouTube that are who the people are that are watching these moto vlogs that are in that 30 to 35, you know, 25 to 35 age range that don't care about brands and don't care about right. who's riding what. They just care about riding and having fun on it and finding out cool things to do. And I think that's going to be an interesting thing to see where moto vlog goes in the coming yeah. future because of. That, that age group that's really starting to be able to be affording motorcycles. Yeah. You know, it's sad, too, because I watched Revzilla put out a video today about uh, cruisers. They had a they had three guys sitting on a couch. They were discussing cruisers. It was like Lenny and two other guys. And yeah, I, I, I scrolled through the comments because I was curious what people were going to say because, you know, it's going to trigger somebody. You just know, you just know it. When you see cruiser, <laughs> most people identify cruiser with Harley Davidson. 90 percent 80 90 percent of the time they do right? well yeah i was going through the comments and one guy's like i don't mind cruisers but i have a big problem with harley davis and hmm. his reasoning after that was they all dress like pirates they think a bandana is going to save their life one day <laughs> <laughs> and, and he just went right. on and on and on about all this stuff that's just not true. I mean, is that part of the culture? Yeah. Is that the whole culture? No. I mean, right. look at, I mean, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a perfect example. I'm 35. I wear a full face helmet. I wear a, a riding Kevlar shirt, and I wear riding jeans. I don't dress like yeah. a pirate. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not your typical, what, I guess, what that type of crowd would think of as a cruiser crowd, uh, yeah. you know? Right, yeah. Yeah, that's it, 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 so true. People like that out there, but like Harley has developed all these subcultures of, of writers that I think a lot of people aren't really realizing that are out there. Yeah, you know, it's, it's some of sure. some of the younger people that are starting to write. It's some of the people that, um, you know, they, they they take different precautions with, you know, what they wear. You know, it, it, like I, like we like we've said in this, it doesn't matter what you ride. It doesn't matter. If, if you wear a helmet or not, I'm going to ride. I'll ride with anybody. I mean, in right. Illinois, Illinois, there is no helmet law. And there's a lot of yeah, people same that don't. There's a lot of people that do not wear helmets in the state. And that's their decision yeah. if they want to do that. I, right. mean, I, I personally, I wear a helmet. Because yeah. the main reasons is I see way too many people texting and driving. There's way too oh, many distracted yeah. drivers. And it's it's awful. And I mean, another reason I wear a helmet is it's better for motorbike. That's that's another yeah. reason. And you know, I wear yeah, for sure, full face, especially full face. Yeah, but I mean, teach his own. Whatever you want to do, whatever you want to do is, you know, that's up to you. Uh, if you're riding, that's cool in my book. Yeah, 
for sure. Definitely, man. Let me sc let's scroll There's a couple through. more questions. Let's scroll through a couple of these and see if we have any more questions. I'm sorry, guys, if I haven't caught any of these. Um, pizza, yeah, pizza does sound good. I haven't had dinner yet. <laughs> any tips for a wannabe vlogger? Someone said, uh, who was that? Adam Richards. Uh, I guess vlogger, moto vlogger, um, or vlogger, because I mean, that, that broadens the range completely. I would assume he means moto vlogger. Um, I guess you would go with the, you know, the typical, like, concept of if you want a moto vlog, you should start with a GoPro. Like, that's pretty much the starting point that you really need to have, and it's affordable compared to trying to branch out into anything else. Get a GoPro, get a mic, and get a helmet, and you know, there's like 100 videos on YouTube of how to break that up to where you can have the helmet and GoPro mounted together with the mic. So um, that's just, you just start riding around and talking. Get used to the concept of mentally, like, being on the road and you're talking and making hand gestures and moving your head around and then you realize everyone around you is looking at you like you're a, a crazy person <laughs> at a stoplight. Just, you know, like, what is this guy doing? Um, and then especially like when you pick, take out a camera this big with a humongous mic on it and a huge lens and set it up on a gorilla pot somewhere, you know, like at the beach where I was at um, one of my recent videos, you know, I've got the waves behind me and stuff. When behind the camera is a whole like store and stuff where people are walking around and, and, they walk past you and they're looking at you like you're completely insane because you're just yeah. standing there talking to a camera. And, uh, you know, people don't get it. But the first two videos I did in Texas where I was doing that out in public, it was tough, like, getting over that weird, like, fact of, like, people looking at you and thinking, like, this guy's a crazy person. You know, let's call him cops. But you just get used to it. And, you know, the same goes for being on, a, at least on a, on a bike, if you got a full-face helmet you're kind of hidden a little bit. So I mean, people wouldn't necessarily know you're talking to yourself, but you start to, uh, the biggest tip I thought of when I started doing it, I thought every time I look at the camera or every time I look at a GoPro or whatever it is I'm doing, I'm going to pretend like however many people are my subscribers, they're all sitting right there. You know, like I'm going to try to make sure that, you know, when I first started in July of this past year, I had about 250 subscribers and I would pretend like there's 250 people standing right in front of me listening mm -hmm. to me. And it makes a big difference to how you, you know, talk and how your inflection is and all of that, rather than being monotone and sort of boring sounding. You know, you, you, if you pretend like you're really talking to people, it makes a big difference, and it helps you ignore people who might be watching you. <laughs> yeah. The big thing for me, uh, getting into moto vlog, and I'm not an expert by any means. I've only been doing this not even a year yet. But um, the biggest thing was, yeah, getting used to talking to yourself. Because at first, it's freaking weird. Like, I would, really? I would practice, like, my, like, the first month or two I was doing it, I would practice in the car when I had to take the car to work, just talking yeah. to myself. Like, okay, what am I going to say in this video? And then just kind of be your own audience at first. Just, you know, kind of, kind of go over what you want to say and then just kind of just wing it. But yeah. it, is, it is definitely weird at first when you're vlogging because, yeah, like, what the hell? I'm talking to myself right now. I must be <laughs> out, out of my mind. But in time, in time it'll yeah. start to feel natural. Yeah. Like, yeah. like I, put, yeah, I, definitely. I turn the audio on. I turn the GoPro on. Just be yourself. Like Joe said below, uh, Great Egret said, just be yourself. That's That's the most important thing. Don't be something you're not. People want to see you be genuinely yourself. They don't want to see, well, I'm going to say most people are probably going to want you to see, are going to want to see you as who you really are. Just yeah. be genuine. Right. Yeah. And be humble and be willing to fumble on your words and, and don't cut it out necessarily. Like, you make sure people see that you're human because then you don't seem robotic and, you know, they will identify you with you better through that, I think. Yeah, get some good audio or uh, editing software too. That way, if you do screw up, you can uh, you can just edit it out. Right. <laughs> yeah. If you saw the cutouts that I had from the very first video I did in July, where I did like the first three parts to a uh, change on a Sportster video, I shot the the part where I'm in the studio like this, talking to myself, talking to the camera. It was probably an hour and a half long of just rambling, and you have to cut so much out, but. You know, you just, yeah, you know, eventually with time, it'll be more concise. Mm. I kind of wish, because, like, I've done a few install videos here and there. 
and I'll fumble mm -hmm. over my words, and I'll have to restart seven or eight times. I wish I would have kept all of that and just put like a a bloopers roll together, like twenty minutes of right. fucking up. <laughs> you know, and getting mad like that's the funny part. You start getting mad at yourself, and it's visibly oh, oh, the, there. Yeah, and it's not. Here's the thing about getting mad. Like I will start. Uh, doing something to my bike, like uh, for instance, I uh, Vance and Hines sent me a new slip-on not too long ago because they noticed the one I had on my bike was broken. So I start putting this thing on in the video, and I don't have the right socket for it, and I just yell, "God damn it!" <laughs> right. <laughs> That's so true. It's always the like the one tool you don't have. It's like the most simple job ever, but you don't have the one tool that's necessary for it. <laughs> I hate that. I got a whole tool That's box. So cool. I got a whole tool right. box full of sockets and, and torx bits and everything. I got everything I need. Good. But anyway, um, Good. we got about we got about a minute twenty five left of this feed, and uh, okay. I don't know if anybody's got any questions real quick, but uh, I want to thank Chad. I want to thank you for hanging out with me tonight. Uh, it's been awesome yeah, to know you a little bit, and I'm looking sure. forward to seeing more of your videos. Guys, if you haven't seen Chad's videos again, I'll put a link in the description below. And I am going to upload this video to YouTube. Uh, hopefully it lets me when we're done here. And that way, if you came in late, you can rewatch it all. But, uh, yeah, man, I can't wait to see what you do with your channel this year. I'm really excited to see what you got going on. Same to you, man. Same to you, for sure. Yeah. Maybe we can do something like this again. I love doing, doing collaborations with other moto bloggers. I think it's fun. Yeah, I mean, make it like a you know every couple of months thing or something. You know, just like a check check up type thing. That'd be cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. Got all you guys watching. I want to thank you for for tuning in. Uh, Gear Raven, Great Motor, Hellstoke Garage, Adam Richards, everybody in here. Thank you so much. It means the world to me. And uh, like I said, go check out Chad Adam Instagram. Go. Go at him on YouTube and check out his stuff. It's really good. But uh, for now, I'm going to go in and watch a hockey game. Uh, my Penguins are playing in uh, Vegas tonight. Uh, watch it, is Washington yeah. They're not playing tonight, but they played last June. <laughs>